Hello everyone, today we talk about the future of Schwerpunkt in a sense, or better the past or the present, whatever. Um, it's all intertwined. Um, because today, or better yesterday night, because I live at night now, by the way, because, uh, you know, pandemic screwed up my, my, my daily schedule, or at least, let's say, my, my time um, routine. And I I began at least I stabilized at night. Um and yesterday night uh I uh I sent I submitted my thesis finally. As you know I've been doing this for, for a long time, three years and a half. It should have been done by November. But because of COVID they extended us for other five months, uh both the scholarship and the time of you know uh, to, to write the thesis. So basically in two months I will know whether this work should need further fixing, which uh, I'm not sure of because the, the two correctors I have are, um, I mean, they're not experts about military history, uh, but they know the time and places that I, s that I researched on well. Um, and in general, I already showed my thesis back in December to my my professors. I mean, my department professor said, you know, the thesis does work, right? There was something to to reg mostly to 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 strengthen a little bit more these, mm, not even to strengthen, but properly to explicitate the mm, historiographical background because uh, I wrote basically everything in note, and there was a pretty hefty introduction that is like. Uh, this says is something like almost 700 pages long, uh, which have not even been laid out as they should have probably been because they detest those, uh, not much because of the, the, the increase in the volume of page, uh, you know, in the quantity of pages, but properly because I can't stand those, those pages that are filled with few words, right? I, I like uh, text walls, and I, you know, it's easier to turn to follow the, the 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 thought right also because my work objectively is needs to be followed it's not just a read and that's what i sometimes wonder you know will will this be understood is text that must be studied and um the the introduction is like 30 pages it would be made would be 60 you know, which is a good one right and i i thought to have concentrated there that the most important um, ideas and then I actually developed further on other historiographical assumptions in, in the rest of, of the chapters. So uh, I in, in, in my method of writing is like you know if if something is the way I say I I give you every freaking information uh, about it in note unless I I want to discuss properly what the problem is from a historiographical point of view and I did that as well but seemingly. The problem was rather, um, you know, quoting the fact that somebody had talked about, you know, certain topics in the first place. Like, I don't know, chapter on the sieges, seven chapters. You know, you should have said more extensively, right, uh, that th there have been other people who talked about siege warfare. And th the idea is that, yes, I do, but how does this fit what I wrote? Because nobody actually ever wrote anything about sieges in the time and space I, I was talking about, especially from a tactical point of view, through the analysis of combat uh, accounts. Uh, so yeah, I can, I, I did quote that in note, they told me, you know all the bibliography, right, so just explicitated, and that was the only problem that it was uh, pointed at, and, uh, but it wasn't something that was, let's say, invalidating the work, or that, you know, it was just, they, they told me it was a matter of etiquette, and generally, I don't give a damn about <laughs> those things <laughs> in the first place, because once again, I believe that you know the bibliography is always there. I quoted it, so if you are interested, go look at that. And I presume you already know what I'm talking about in the first place. And uh, uh, in terms of what others wrote, and I, if I make a synthesis, a sum of as I did at the beginning of the chapters of what the, the problem is in terms of siege warfare, how this this operations were carried out, what was the problem? But it's obvious that I'm, you know, referring to the things I quoted, so um, I don't need to point out name, the uh, say names of the scholars, and I don't, I don't give a damn, frankly, because yes, I'm not the first that talks about these things, but you know, in general, I can't 
quote all the people who talk about siege warfare because by the way they wanted just to make me quote the people that you know in my country wrote recently about it that didn't write about what I wrote at all because it was just a general introduction the fact oh there are sie there was siege warfare well thanks my eyes right you know like, but we are at this level <laughs> and maybe they should quote me since I am you know the only person who actually bother himself to, to study certain uh, to, to study the actual practice of, of, of those sieges in a tactical analysis that is not just a list of events but you know a broader synthesis that tells something more about that period those places right so anyhow this was just my I don't know why I should have not opened the video <laughs> with this rant because then you think I'm somewhat hurt or in my feelings now I really don't care but of course after you have made such a long work you kind of know what it what it is and why you did certain things and there were other problems that let's say I uh, said details but you know corrections that were actually wrong and that I found out later checking it and I realized that you know the quality of my corrector sometimes is not being dramatic also because I haven't worked properly with specialists of my, in my field it's pretty strange uh, you make a PhD that you know that is like three times more than the average one in terms of actual material collected and analyzed and the uh, you know you you do it on, on your own and you realize that you went beyond even what I mean checking by bloggers what others had written before and you fix that and you even point out that the ba basically missed a huge elephant in the room well first of all try to understand what I did right and that tells you how arrogant it can be sometimes and, and I believe you know it it's pride it's it, there, there is always a form of resistance or reaction right both from the the newcomer the says the new thing and both from the concert you know from from the this you know scholarship that tends to to be more conservative as always so actually I do have somewhat high expectations about this work not much because of the objective relevance of things I I, I found out in there uh, but also and especially for the fact that it, it represents something new right from a methodological point of view from a literally for, from a from a let's say what what are the bases of what, what is also the scale of what this aims at and the reason why that is essentially a com comparative analysis of um, let's say of European armies uh, based basically on a single country but you know realizing what that what was happening there has been brutally overlooked in relate in function to what historiography has thought that was was happening in, in medieval you know in, in warfare at the time and especially pointing out that there were certain achievements in other countries that have been uh, have been somewhat exaggerated fr from from uh, from the let's say from properly the, the military art standpoint right not because they might have been less more or less politically relevant but because fundamentally um, they you know historiography pick one factor that would have um, substantially made this thing special and then basically neglected what was happening in the rest of the continent for different reasons that can be you know linguistical distance uh, the same you know histori local historiographers that didn't help much in the process um, to to maybe study military history in the first place and uh, also possibly you know a general you know in fact ignorance of the same you know European warfare itself so my thesis is important in my opinion because it shakes conscience uh, about the fact that we think we know history in a certain way but we actually don't even know each other we actually don't even study uh, we we're, we have lost the, ca the the capacity of comparing so this thesis means a lot to me especially for that reason right it's not because I found also 
specifically, I mean, this, this thesis is also very important for for the history of the country I described, uh, because nobody had done that before, uh, and I'm literally um, the first person, like in 200 years of, you know, say, serious historiography at some levels, or maybe less, actually, but still, you know, relevantly 90 years of distance, right, you know, that, uh, that some, a scholar came up and say, okay, let's study this thing, and that in turn was coming after nine years <laughs> of this, and somebody had um, tried to, to approach the thing. And it's naturally, in fact, also an attack to that local historiography uh, because uh, of the incapacity, indeed, the, the, let's be honest, the complete ignorance in military history. Um, I have problems myself with this. It's part of the reason why I also did, I wasn't followed by an expert. Um, and because uh, there's not even an expert on this topic, which is not so alien uh, or strange or bizarre, right? You know, at this point at university, you, you find the, the most, you know, objectively eccentric type of, of researches. So it, it was a courageous take because I s simply shifted from any, you know, kind of uh, use however that historiographically is meant to, to deal with. It's um, it's somewhat kind of, you know, I was very influenced by uh, Anglo-Saxon historiography, I must say that, um, also partly by the French one, because, um, let's say, they're used to make more, um, let's say, more regional inquiries on a certain period of time. That's basically what I did as well. But I went beyond, right? Even by scale, I, I got inspired by uh, Kelly De Vries. Um, uh, I think the title is a European Warfare in, in the Early 14th Century. Uh, I didn't honestly start from that, but that was like a point of reference, like just for the sake. I, I didn't use it much for the test itself, if not some reference to early 14th century battles. And um, and that is essentially he was it was his. PhD thesis as well, and that's a purely tactical analysis of all these battles. Um, it's, it, you know, I, I I don't agree exactly. I mean, before before starting the research, I liked the text more. <laughs> then eventually, I realized it's not. I reevaluated very much for Bruggen, right? This kind of Batavian <laughs> historiography that um, uh, that now I can't make too much references about this thing but um, let's say that that's to me what a, what actually military history is right and you you think that after such great names things are somewhat um, you know exhausted I, it's absolutely not true right it's plenty especially about medieval warfare uh, low middle it's plenty of stuff to, to research still right um, and many pe most people do it just tiny bit by tiny bit, and they lose the the the, the whole perspective because they they do they do things well properly by the book we could say. They go in the archive, they find a new you know document, they say, oh wow, look, it's it's, it's since it's new, it's the greatest thing a historian can do, right? Find it? No, right? Historians are meant to research constantly on everything that comes under their sphere of knowledge and especially to come up with a synthesis right if uh, I, I I never went to an archive uh, d for this research right I went for other reasons in other moments but um, let's say to me nothing right I didn't need this even my tutor that is one of the greatest experts in certain fields you know medieval history she's, she's renowned and broad she never went to an archive. Well, I mean, part of her reason, because, you know, she, she's mostly an early medievalist, um, but practically because also it, it's also another way, you know, of making history, right? And you should never underestimate, especially when you have such a huge amount, like, of of documentation already, pop, already edited, right? Already published, that, you know, that there is always something more you can do, right? And however, De Vries basically did only that, that is, he picked, uh, you know, these battles from basically all medieval war, let's say all European warfare at the time, they were the most meaningful battles in terms of, of, of the tactical success of infantry, which is something I also started from, that's why I was so interested in that book in the beginning, 
I don't fully like the method he used. I think he made a bit too much synthesis. I mean, it's a good, very good work, and he's very, it's very balanced. But let's say, um, it's not like you know, on those battles. If you even if you look at Verbruggen or other, you know, more modern texts, you you know, you you could make an entire freaking PhD on on, them, right? If even if I just say Chrissy, right? Maybe there's not much to. Uh, to to add because at this point, but still, it, sometimes it's so complicated to to even reconstruct to observe certain aspects. I, for example, resumed even certain battle analysis from there, and in that that were were useful to prove actually a point of mind that these these battles were important. I mean, not talking about Crisis specifically, if not for a tactical balance there that I should. Uh, sorry if I'm so cryptic, but you know. Um, let's say I, I could extrapolate from from making fit to, to the conclusions I found that is uh, let let's be you know careful not creating false myths or say f false idols we could say in that in that regard um, because especially when it comes to warfare uh, it's very very easy to say okay let's make sense simply on the base of you know the battle went I think the battle went like that so point end of the story. We often don't know, right? And there is always a lot missing. And the, pers you know, the comparative analysis um, uh, that uh, you know was important because it, it it showed exactly what is lacking there. That is the perspective. Is how can I judge what what something went like if I actually don't even know what what the rest of warfare was like at the time. Reason for which, even though my thesis revolved largely around tactical analysis, basically of any single combat that 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 documented battle uh, that that occurred in 60 years, that you know in that region, there is an overwhelming amount of, of information that's you know it, it occupied me for years that for that reason. Um, the um, I it basically listed all the contingents that were sent. That is to say, I don't you don't just study the battles, but you you start to go look and see, you know, what every power used armies like. And here we're talking about tens of powers, by the way, um, concentrated in a certain area. Um, and it, in spotting if if there are common, let's say, differences or analogies, and then controlling whether what you can extrapolate from, let's say, the the, the the organic dimension actually fits what happens in the battlefields. A new method, never seen it used anywhere, simply because the amount of data is is enormous. Usually, historians don't do that, right? Methodologically speaking, you know, we, you you could have you r would rightfully have legitimate doubts about this. Well, it turns out it it I centered, I, I nailed it, right? You know, it it corresponds, right? What you can derive from that actually corresponds to what happens on the battlefield as well. I made all, uh, you know, that there was also a, a, a world political social background there to explain the fact why certain arms increased, decreased in importance, so that, you know, I had to take that in consideration as well. Uh, there was some uh, properly comparison between different military cultures that, f you know, because there were mercenaries fighting in this place from different countries and... Uh, uh, en masse, right, and and therefore looking at, you know, wh how they differed and why and what what is that they were bringing. So, so it was an omnicomprehensive work, right, but it, it, you would say, well, my God, it's so much. Yes, it is so much, but it was aimed literally just at the tactical, sometimes the strategical synthesis. And it turned out that it's not only, you know, it says something very concrete about that that world and that fits with with you know the, the broader logic of the work itself but it also fits with the rest of w w what my biography says about the political and social reality and this is you know I, I didn't explicitate it in the work but this was naturally a Clausewitzian method I used uh, but you know the people I, I talked to at university sometimes actually do not even know what von Clausewitz is, sadly enough. Um, so we are at that level of saying, okay, if I have to add other three pages to explain 
that I use a clause of its in method in the introduction. Okay, let's get rid of it and simply do the thing, right? And that's why it sounds somewhat um, as if I didn't want to quote others or that I, I didn't care because, yes, because what I did was extremely aimed, right? And I didn't give a damn about objectively any other kind of historiographical hat to it um, in terms of look that, you know, there's something around uh, war that you should name. Now, this is the uh, th this is not military history. This is the history of military art. So, unless you provide me with some information that fits that, right, I will quote you, and I did it. Otherwise, I don't have to make content to anybody, right? This is my work. You should be thankful for it in the first place, and and to be extremely careful about what is written in it. Um, so it's um, it you know that says how loaded I am in a way I mean I'm not so loaded because as you know and I told you uh, this was a brief parenthesis about um, the uh, the nature of the work that at this point I'm I must say I'm almost not nauseated by because of course in the la I had like in the last two weeks as you know I I, I, I had a you know pretty heavy moral blow and I even I was exhausted like uh, this thing this PhD has been it's been beautiful because I could do finally something that was unique in its regard and I'm waiting for it because as I told you in two months I, I, I'm, I will be told whether I have you know this can't go to the final the you know say the you know say discussion we could call it in this way or whether I get the title or whether I need, right, other six months, not paid by way, <laughs> uh, to fix something that doesn't work. I hope it won't, right? It, I don't think there is, mm, you know, a good reason for it, but we'll see. In any case, I don't care because, you know, morally speaking, I've been devastated uh, recently. Uh, I have zero motivation, zero strength. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's also the time of the year because I, I let's be honest. I detest spring. Just you know, <laughs> I I love the cold season, um, and I um, I just feel down, right? I feel. I mean, I feel myself. Yes, I I'm not depressed. Whatever, but this has been hard, right? For for tr more than three years, I've been like working, basically every day. Right, because I have went on vacations here and there, but let's say uh, I don't go out for the rest. I, I always work hours every day, right? And I do only this, and if not, Schwerpunkt. That, that's why we discuss this stuff now, because this has probably going to have some some influence on, on Schwerpunkt for a number of reasons that I, I will explain to you. But let's say that. You know, it's a hard experience. It, it seems like PhD students are more exposed, like tries normal the rest of the population to depression, uh, because they're comp put in competition. They're anxious. They have the imposter syndrome. They they think they're not good enough. Right? There was a point, especially at the end of the first year, that I said, "What the hell did I do up to now?" And and then I fixed it. I was lucky, too. I moved on. It, it's let's say, a huge effort because it, it obliges you to think in long terms, um, you know, uh, you know, in long time terms that, uh, of course, as you know, and also we, we explain on Schwerpunkt is that you, you, I could have not known three years and a half ago what, what I would have achieved. Like, I had something in mind, and I must say I managed to, to actually recover um or to resume all the plans and to fulfill them to fulfill the my 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 ambitions and dreams that time that at the beginning of the test uh, of the research I said okay I have no time for this I will never make it because I don't even know where to start from right but you can't properly know how it will go right and in, uh, reasoning on a 3 year term is, is it's very stressing because you have no idea whether you have the time, well, how how this thing will go. So you have to. It's maybe every day. It's a, it's a low pressure, but when you consider that that lasts for so long in a row, 
and it's always there, it doesn't go away till the end, right? It's very stressing. So, as it's normal for every human being, after a huge effort, you relax. And when you relax, you kind of become lazy, right? So, I hope this won't happen to me. But recently, I also had this major disappointment, so, um, for, for personal reasons. And, and in April, I thought I would have to conquer the world, to, to go out there, to do a lot of stuff in function of that now everything is cut and, and I feel very down like in the last week especially uh, you know sometimes I found myself laying on bed looking at the ceiling and saying what the hell like not even you know as if I had been emptied of anything uh, I was very sad at certain in certain moments but but I'm not depressed I mean it's the natural kind of um, shock absorption and uh, you know the dealing with it right and and I hope especially in the next days that uh, I will manage to recover some some wish some some motivation really because it all gets down to that as we know uh, I was talking about it in, in that video last uh, time about you know believing in yourself of the great defeat right so before that I was so haughty and arrogant, probably still am as you hear about my thesis. And now instead I sent it yesterday night, I thought it would have been an emotional moment, uh, you know, it, it's just, okay, I uploaded it, it remained on that page, it's okay, well, you know, as if nothing happened, really. Um, and um, so, in general, what I think the most important thing is now is to to go on with things I I do normally and one of this is Schwerpunkt and why is the thesis important for Schwerpunkt? For, for a number of reasons well the first one maybe not the most important but still meaningful enough is that I basically started Schwerpunkt with a PhD and more than that, because um, you know how this thing, I don't know if I ever told you about this, maybe you know in a few days, if everything works right, I will have the 1000 video special, let's say. And I will tell you a bit about how this thing is going and what I plan and so But actually some of you already know probably that I had uh, planned to start doing this stuff while I was in the PhD selection and I thought I would never make it because there was just like one place for 16 people and I, I, I didn't think I could ever ta win it myself um, and I said okay I'm screwed anyway so I began to I think it started on, uh, on ex excuse me on Facebook like with a page nothing I, I don't know whether it was called Schwerpunkt already but yeah I think so and then I it was blocked by Facebook because I started sharing for views and the, you know they blocked it with the, the algorithm and so on and then I won the selection and I began the PhD I was so you know, relax and say, okay, well, you know what, I always wanted to make that try, at least to have a channel, and I will start that. It was three years ago, right? I think I began at the end of January 2018. And uh, here we are now. So basically, as you know, I began uh, to post every day since like six months after the beginning and um, ever since I've been here. So Schwerpunkt changed my my uh, my mind at many levels enormously because it taught me to do that comparative analysis and having th that synthesis capability that was required for my thesis. And possibly, you know, my thesis did influence Schwerpunkt, even though I never quite discussed my object of research that is naturally an historical one, so it would be interesting for you at some point to know as well. I would like to make a series about, I don't know, my, for example, my bachelor thesis that was about Longobard military history. My master thesis was about the Battle of Dürnkrut and uh, Jedenspeigen, 1278. And uh, so the Austrian battle is one of the most famous in the Middle Ages, but a few people actually know it. Uh, I was on the battlefield. I, I had beautiful experiences in all this time. Uh, it, it all 
brought me somewhere, even with my relationships, I went abroad, I did things, I mean, that made me learn about other historical stuff, I mean, it was a great important, you know, a really important time for for my life now, and, and I began, however, to expand my mind dramatically on what I was writing in my thesis, thanks to the videos I made on Cyberpunk, so in a sense, what I'm doing right now is, is all intertwined, that's also why I feel so down at, uh, at other levels, because I thought uh, this would match all with, you know, success, and, you know, with a girl I loved and said, stress right, you said I lost her, and that's, you know, you know, it was all one, right, and, and, and that made me so, you know, demotivated that right now, so, but I still think that if I keep doing this, even though, it, I mean, talking about the channel, I, I, I seen that there's not been a dramatic success, but I get so much positive feed from you that, uh, you know, qualitative one that I, I think it should be, um, you know, I, I could recover simply through this. That is to say, certain things will never be the same for me. First of all, but at many levels in my life now, but. Still, if I go on with this, I hope to to do something that can maybe help me uh, be back on track and helping others. As far as you know, I've received messages and stuff and saying, okay, you know, you, you know, thanks to your videos, I discovered that, or you know, I began to study at university. You know, I received this stuff. Uh, it's very touching for me, but I still do it for myself primarily, and um, I I like doing it. I would like to do more, honestly. I would like, I mean, to do more, to do better, actually, not more than what I do, right? Because I would like actually to do less, but better. And but I still realize that what I do is exactly what's what 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 people have appreciated this thing for. It's myself, right? So I I do care because I stayed true to myself when I've done this. So I haven't uh, bent to any other logic. And another reason why this is relevant for Schwerpunkt is that I would like to start a series at some point, also probably soon, I don't know, I, I probably wait this two months, but let's say, to tell you what PhD is about, not because of the PhD in itself, but because of, as a form of motivation and, you know, example of historical problems, method, inquiry, you know, showing you how 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 it's how it is backstage right uh, even if i will f even if i fail this let's say <laughs> you know which i hope not really but um that would be s equally meaningful for you because what i discovered in these years is that all it gets down really to the motivation which is something that is difficult to understand if you're used to think that things work because there is some kind of mechanism that makes it done. Of course there are, you know, certain dynamics that are not virtuous in, in the process do not help. But motivation breaks any barrier in a sense and this is what I truly believe in for anything in life so that's also why sometimes it's very disappointing to go on to, to wish for something then would you see that other people do not do not believe as much as you as you do. And this instead for me has become something extremely meaningful. And it, it changed my life. Before I wasn't like that. Before before these years I I, I had that kind of a predisposition. I felt I did certain amazing stuff for if I think about it, you know, in moments in which I don't know, maybe intellectually I would I wouldn't give a damn about myself because I thought it was stupid or you know. But I, I still realized that there is a pattern that that matches with what I, I still believe in and 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 this is important to to speak of right uh, it's something that von Clausewitz helped me you know this is this these are the years in which we have been fully acquainted with von Clausewitz and that is becoming the the, the leading uh, light let's say in our uh, inquiry and that is uh, dispelling so many doubts and myths that frankly I'm I'm I feel blessed by and I it this this is probably one of the best choices I've ever done in my life right seriously because you 
if you have followed what we're doing here, you know what I'm talking about, about especially the Home Krieger. But uh, it's something that until you, you don't do yourself, you, 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 you can't believe it's possible. Right, it's it's about the clarity of the vision. It's about the correctness of the intuition. It's about the limpidity of the evidence, and all what this can be really applied for in reality. And it's an experience that it's self-explanatory only when you go through it. This is another thing I learned that, of course, I can't even start this series for example on, uh, on on the research and you know giving advice and telling you the, my perspective there is some fascinating an anecdotes and so on but you know until you you don't go through it yourself you will never fully acknowledge what it is so that's why I make such a great effort also to to say these things out loud because I feel as if nobody's sp spoke about these things in the first place. I mean, I remember always since uh, I, I was a child, like asking how it's next, like how is school, uh, how it's university, how it's, you know, and, and everybody would, um, you know, would give you answers, but you would, they would be contradictory, would be superficial, they would be, you know, something that I it's even actually of no use, it doesn't help you to choose. And part of the reason is because you don't know. Maybe you don't get exactly what they mean. But at the end of the day, I realized they probably didn't even begin begin to to answer you, right? They they don't tell you how it really is. So I what I do on this channel sometimes a bit you know theoretically because I usually don't talk so much about my my concrete experiences. Like I don't tell you know I was here in that year did this and that. I I give you some hint now personal experience, but in a in a functional sense, I mean, it's not because it's about me specifically, but it's just because I know that, right? For thinking how I can this can be helpful for you, but you know, I, I I found I would like to be helpful in that sense. I mean, I would like here, you know, if a kid from I don't know what's you know how what high school is about, what university is about, what what, what progressing this thing is about, uh, to at least get what what it is naturally i mean concretely but if i um, also there is another problem of course that every experience is different but sometimes even macroscopically because of i don't know uh, phds are not the same everywhere right school is not the same everywhere university is not the same everywhere and it's it's kind of difficult sometimes to properly explain um, in concrete terms, uh, so I, I will try to do my best, but this hopefully will be will be a thing. And the research is relevant for Schwerpunkt in another way, also because my life will change. So I don't, I'm not sure I, I can't keep up with like a video a day. I don't know, because I don't know what I I'm going to do. Right? Perspectives are relatively uh, meager in time of pandemic, meaning that uh, as long as I stay home, okay, yeah, you know, the worst for me. Uh, the the better for you because I would keep doing this, but um, let's assume I get a postdoc, which is exactly what I'm I'm starting to search for now. Um, I I need to uh, you know maybe you know I won't be here every day. So first of all, I will not abandon the channel. I mean the channel. Okay, there, there will. I'm not sure whether this thing can because. Just for example, I, I use some copyrighted material in this. And that's dangerous, right? Because if you realize I, I make all I always blurry the copyrighted pictures and I kind of dilute them. So I mean in terms of fair use I think uh, I'm borderline, right? And f up to this point I haven't had any copyright strike or anything. I see that it's plenty of channels out there that basically use copyrighted material in a much more explicit way and make much more views than I do and nothing happens. The reason being that my copyrighted stuff is usually pictures from historical drawings and um, the people who make these, uh, I think at the end of the day they mostly even benefit from, from the fact that other people show these images 
at some levels. Um, of course, I would, I, I try my best to blurry to you know to be consistent in this regard. Um, and if anybody asks me for copyright, I'll, I'll always I can I can delete the video, I can uh, or multiple ones I can uh, give appropriate crediting. I can even you know there's a system on YouTube now which is usually what happens with songs. Uh, I once uh, up on another channel I had many 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 years ago uploaded like the only video I ever well no actually there were a couple ones um, w there was a song in it and now YouTube basically when spots when it spots the copyright because they, they can spot the music stuff the, tr the audio tracks are easy to track they don't have the technology to sp to or the uh, data bank to 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 spot pictures, right? Because the sheer amount of, of, of stuff um, uploaded on YouTube every day is enormous, right? But they do they made that basically they simply my videos started making money, but for the for the guys who own the rights of the music, so it's fine. It was fine to me because I just wanted to upload the the thing for for another reason. I didn't want to make money with it. That and was content with it. So I don't think I will have problem um, with that. Um, but I mean, I think this channel is somewhat like it will always be some kind of B series one, right? Because they have no interest at the moment to implement the graphics, all this stuff. I mean, um, I just do this every day. You see how I work here. Um, it's always the same. I mean, it's for me. So if I'm going to have less time, of course, I will post less. Uh, this could actually help maybe um, speaking of the quality of the contents meaning that I, I, I may concentrate on the most important stuff that is namely military history right because I don't know if you spotted the, 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 the trend here and how I I pick the topics but there is a cyclicity some is manualistic stuff that is more civilian stuff let's say and general history then there is the, the most sp specific military themed one I, I could concentrate on that if I can't post every day I would have maybe more time to prepare the videos in a sense because I don't doesn't take really much so if it's diluted over days even if I work I can easily prepare them it's not a problem uh, I mean have been working consistently during three, three uh, months as, uh, three years as well so but you know if I make a postdoc I, it's possible I will have to to hold uh, you know for more conferences lessons I will have to make exams, stay the whole day at university. So it's obvious that I can't post every day. I mean, at university, I mean, wherever, because I, I should have started assistantship last November as well. <laughs> so I should uh, do both things. And you understand that um, uh, the um, there's not enough time. But uh, in this sense, maybe some curiosity and would be more satisfied because if I start posting more about, I don't know, late medieval warfare types of warriors equipment etc I'm sure I'm going to make more views May maybe maybe those are not even for me d in absolute terms the most interesting videos because some of the most fascinating ones came actually randomly from other from other topics but surely they are the ones that I count on you know on which uh, you know a schwerpunkt to to structure itself the most in a sense I mean the ones that I I find more thought-provoking more challenging more exciting in a sense and think about the battle videos right sometimes I wanted here to make uh, you know to talk even about contemporary warfare modern warfare something that I didn't have enough time to do so I'm not sure what it now will have because anyhow I start uh, start to also make a lot of write articles call for papers so probably my life won't change a big deal right but if it does it's because I will have less time anyway right I know that if I will is wrong in English <laughs> but I keep saying it sorry um, and other point uh, so yeah this is mostly like maybe a an appetizer for the updates I have to to make uh, for the 1000 uh, videos video um, this is one for for just updating ab you about the fact this is like a, a new time in my life that um, I will try to put the best to use mm. because and it's difficult because you know until you were at university right now 
because at the end of the day, even if you are a researcher for the university, you, you technically work for the university, right? This was technically work. I figure as a researcher and as a, um, you know, as an employee, right? So, but it's still considered university in a sense. Um, and, but, you know, you have the bachelor, you have the master, you have the PhD. So you, you have these uh, potentially in, this li in the shortest of times, eight years, right? This last one's even increased because of the COVID, the extensions. I lost two years in the process because before history, as, you, as I, to I told you, I studied one, well, actually six years of economics. Then between the bachelor and the master, for writing a good bachelor thesis, I actually lost another year. Um, so it's been a long time. And in, on this time, you it's, it's annoying, frankly, because I'm so happy. I remember when I, when I finished the last, you, <laughs> you know, I made the, 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 the I passed the last university exam and say, okay, I won't have the obsession of having to plan exams, time being squeezed like that. You know, I have three years now for making the research finally, and I can do whatever the heck I want, right? And I see many of my colleagues that took this for doing other stuff, like even participating for more call for papers or going around doing other stuff writing books, right, you know, I say, you know, you, you, you're writing a PhD, don't you have anything better to do but stay, you know, focused on it? Uh, I was, okay, I made Schwerpunkt, so, yeah, if, if I hadn't had this, I could have done plenty of other stuff, right, uh, but at the same time, there's a regularity even in the work that can't be just, you know, even breaking is not probably the best idea, but in general, um, you know, I was within this, you know, I'm a person that, it, when when you put me on a track, I go on. But if I know what I have to do specifically, I can, uh, if I have to invent something along the way, I, I block myself because it, it's boring. I could never arrange, like, conferences and not so, I don't care. I don't care, I want just research, right? Even, I'm not even sure that whether I, I would like teaching or not, probably not. Um because it's tiring and annoying, uh, especially at university. Uh, maybe it's what I do <laughs> here every day, but let's say that uh, you can't do, in my opinion, teaching and, and researching at the same time, right? It's you, you do the both of them bad. To me, the best thing would be research, right? I don't give a shit about being the professor that teaches kids and it's cool, I don't give a damn. Uh, I want to know history, like my, my world deal is that I'm curious, I mean, my life is honestly about something else, I'm a more of a sentimental person, but this thing makes me, you know, I have fun with it, right, I like learning more stuff, but the first thing I did yesterday before, you know, after sending my, submitting my thesis was reading a book about Ian Heath, about the, the armies of the Aztecs and the Incas, I read like 30 pages and it was too long, it was like all the same, and I said, okay, well, okay, I will read it another time, it was very big. Today I would like to start reading something else because I, uh, that there is something I did during these years I wanted to finally read, even, even unpleasant reads, honestly, I mean, things that I know they're wrong, and just knowing how I was curious about how they wrote that, and, um, therefore this is my situation now. And I hope just to remain doing what I do, let's say as long as I like, <laughs> right? And um, and I don't have any plan to stop Schwerpunkt, of course. I mean, I don't see any reason to at the moment. I could, I know I should do more. I know I should. My life can't be uh, infinitely about the uh, not because my life is not cons consistently not about this, but still, like with that disappointment. I thought certain things would change in my life, instead they concretely wouldn't. And I wish they had. A at, at that point I would have liked to, to travel more uh, and to, let's say, to do something that I, um, you know, that I would have probably taken more time, you know, where and another. And I would st still like to continue this because she was mm, also about medieval warfare. And uh, we would have been the best ever, but distance seemingly was more important 
than us and uh at least not from my side and anyhow um this uh, and i understand the person because it was very difficult uh seriously but it's nothing too difficult when you love someone but and and i have still my moral resources now but still it's like you understand it after this i i wonder like but there is nothing new do i remain exactly as it was does this go on forever like i it's an important issue because also with my family like I, things are going to change at some point uh i have to 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 move up i have to 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 accomplish something in uh in uh, I, i don't have the anxiety of success honestly i'm pretty satisfied with what i can do and what i will probably do but still i realize that it can't things can can go that easily forever in a way in any case this things will stay i will never delete the channel i will never stop let's say updating you i will never stop uploading when i can so for now it goes on exactly how it's gone uh i was planning to maybe add some more uh difficult stuff like increase doubling and maybe a bit uh the late medieval warfare specialistic stuff because that's fascinating i have two entire volumes about certain information we usually you know we don't use them all the time you know compared to other material that can that maybe is paraded more here than that maybe doesn't deserve as much uh I I would like to expand in fact on more let's say eccentric topics right but and the prospects of the channel probably not that huge right I today I reached 3500 which is a big deal uh if you think about it like if you think about the absolute number of people that came here to follow and i know that there are more that follow from the outside without subscription but um uh, still it's almost 1000 videos so it's not a great result and i will document this better in in some time when we make that video about the 1000 and that's pretty much it i don't know how to you know i don't know what to add at this point cuz i was thinking this as i told you yesterday would do great right you know feel ah okay I, this like heroic moment like i submitted as not really i'm pretty exhausted tired and i just want to relax a little bit that's that's all i want sharpunk does provides me it does provide me with that and and i do um you know i appreciate the, the rhythm of it I appreciate the rhythm of growth the um, you know the feed i receive it, it's an equilibrated it's a balanced way and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so anyway for now I'll just stop it here i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.